Welcome back, guys, to the third part of the UFC 253 coverage. Where our fourth part is the fourth part. Ah, oh, this is why. I, uh, uh. This is why I do the intros. You're right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. This you're is right. the fourth part of the UFC 253 coverage, and we're coming back to you with the main event: Israel Asanya versus Paulo Costa. Mm-hmm. What a barn burner of a two-round fight we have here. That's right, man. <laughs> now it's. Got is, it, 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say that Paulo's legs literally looked like they got hit with baseball bats. Whew. Oh, yeah. my God. From the get-go, too. Yeah, immediately. Yeah, he, was, he was doing up. nothing to check those legs. Not at all. He just he really didn't believe that skinny-ass Israel Asanya was going to hurt big old balloon animal him. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and well, yes, while the real – while the story – part of the story here is just how Adesanya pretty much just dominated Costa – I it's mean, a flawless victory. Yeah, I mean, I think Costa said. might have landed like one jab. Yep. But Adesanya just completely dismantled him. But I think the real story here is that we know this isn't how Costa usually fights. Yeah. This it, was a, it was a pathetic version of what Costa usually does. Yeah. Um, it was weird because it was like he was constantly clowning Adesanya, the whole but, time giving him a white belt. Yeah. Oh yeah. The pre, the the pre fight stuff was pretty hilarious. Um, throwing the white belt at Adesanya, um, <sighs> but ultimately when it came to the actual fight in the octagon itself, he was doing the same thing. Yeah. But but it was like he was literally leaving himself open for all these counter punches and strikes, and he wasn't his typical what some people would describe his bull like self you know, bull in a China shop type persona and I didn't mean, live up to it. Didn't live up to it. Um, I mean, I remember some people were asking Dana White if he was disappointed in that the fight itself did not live up to fighter fight of the year expectations. Um, but really, I think that people are just like, what happened? <laughs> yeah. Like they're more shocked that Paul Acosta just didn't seem to show up for the fight. Uh, and that he had no plan B. Not at all. Um, yeah, it was it was odd. It just looked like he wasn't ready. Yeah, like he genu- – it was almost like he genu- – it was almost like the only fight of Adesanya's he had seen up to that point was the Yoel Romero fight and yeah. assumed that Israel Adesanya had no idea how to fight. Yeah. And completely underestimated his speed. And uh, – I mean, when you look at them, the fight IQ of Adesanya is just so much higher than Costa's in a sense of, like, the striking skill. It's just so much higher. Um, but I don't know, man. That was just – that was an interesting performance, to say the least. But if we were to move from Costa to Adesanya, let's talk about Adesanya and the absolute clinic he put on Costa. He destroyed him. Yeah, he absolutely he. This was the best case scenario for Israel Asanya mm-hmm. is just to have a have a barely moving target. Yeah, I mean, this is like you said, this is the best thing that happened for him, especially coming off of his fight against Romero, which a lot of people said was the most boring fight of his entire career. Exactly, and, and a career that's out, pretty stellar otherwise. Yeah, and then just to come out here and beat his shins up with a baseball bat and then just hit him in the temple once and knock him down is mm-hmm. perfect. Yeah. It's absolutely perfect for Israel. Yeah. It ended up being pretty great because the shots on the leg were super effective. We saw the damage immediately. And then it, it all came down to just how much of a scalpel he is as a fighter that he was able to land really two significant strikes. Um, put him to, away immediately. Almost. Put him away Pretty much, yeah, like you said, um, that head kick, that that clip, beautiful, you know, Costa immediately cuts him, um, and immediately causes damage. And then, like you said, that punch off the temple that just grazes the temple that drops Costa immediately. The accuracy beats power. Yeah, it's it's like it's like Adesanya has been saying the entire time leading up to the fight. Everybody has power, but he has precision. mm Hmm. And it, and, it, and it really showed because um, Costa just couldn't touch him. 
You wrecked them. Yeah. I mean, that's plain and simple. Honest, oh, man. And, and you, just, you saw what happened, obviously, like right after he got the TKO finish. He so where he humped him a little bit? Yeah, he basically just yeah. dry humped him a little bit. Yeah. I mean, after somebody's talking that much shit and yeah. throwing white belts at you and you beat him like that, humped yeah. him a little bit. No respect. No respect. No respect. They give and, me no and, respect. But, I mean, like, even even on, on such a more advanced level than we've seen before, how many times does this happen where a fighter fights somebody, has almost zero respect for them? And then gets trashed? And then gets trashed. You and I are working on a project right now that's literally based that's around that, that idea. This might um, have to make the list now. Maybe. I don't know. Well, <laughs> Not we, yet. We, we've already wrote let's the thing. Let it, yeah, let's let it age like a fine wine, this one. We'll honor Maybe this we'll, is... We'll honorable mention it. There we go. Um, but yeah, this is just this is just one of those classic cases where Costa was thought he was the Brazilian Superman, the eraser. He thought he was going to erase the style bender from history. And it just didn't. But happen when the world him. when the world needed him the most, <laughs> he didn't vanish. <laughs> he was there waiting. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Um, so yeah, so I mean, there's not really a whole lot left to say about the performance other than Adesanya just cleaned house. He did what a champion does. Yeah. Now, um, before we leave, this is tied to something Adesanya said to Dana White and in his press conference. Um, oh, the 90, the 90, 30. Yes. Yes. Yeah. How fi- so, so for context, basically what had happened was on this card tonight, one of Adesanya's teammates lost a fight against an opponent who weighed four pounds over is the overweight opponent won, And usually when a fighter comes in overweight, they don't meet the weight limit. They lose 30% of their purse. What Adesanya was proposing to Dana White immediately after winning and then posing the idea yet again in his press conference, this post fight press conference is that instead of 30%, fighters need to be fined a clean 90%. Kind of agree. I mean, yeah. I don't know, I don't know if, I, if it needs to be that extreme, but definitely like that's part of the fighting. And def- it's definitely it's increasing. Yeah, definitely increase it by more than that because it's getting embarrassing how many people are just lose, missing weight and not caring. Yeah. Because, I mean, because to them, it's like, well, it's only 30% of my purse. Yeah, it should and, be more. You should, yeah. be, you should be making weight every time. That should never be part of the discussion is somebody missed weight. Yeah. And I think, but still won. And I think that the other thing that's really annoying to swallow is that these guys have 90 minutes. They have an hour and a half to lose the weight, but then they just kind of, and they also have the however many weeks leading up to the fight. Yeah, of course. That, which, is that, absurd, which is absurd. Yeah, you know me. We've, we've talked about this so many times on, on uh, the show before, previous Ninth Corners. We've talked about it so many times where it, it just it really grinds my gears. You know, it, it, really, it really grinds my gears, dude. It really brings my piss to a boil when, especially during the pandemic, when people have just been home and all they've got to do is train until they finally get that chance to fight. They've had nothing else going on and they just, they don't, they don't lose the weight that they need to you know. Even if it's just by four pounds, they don't put in that extra amount of work. This to be is able to their job. <laughs> exactly. Like this <laughs> like, is, they're paid to do this and they lose like money if, when they don't do it. It's like if we're just working, let's just say we're working the restaurant business mm-hmm. and we just don't fucking, we just don't make sure that everything is up to date. There's stuff that's out of date. We're just letting it happen. Yeah. Same I mean, kind of thing. It, it, it kind of, like, for me, the thing that pops into my head, right off the top of my head, is when uh, Davis and Figueredo came in overweight for his first fight with Joseph Benavidez. Yeah. And that was for a championship fight. He yeah, yeah. You had, to, the, you had to win twice. That's, <laughs> like, I mean, he definitely. I mean, he definitely, he had, yeah, he cemented the fact that Joseph Benavidez is never yeah. going to become champion. But the idea that he came in overweight for a fight that's that was literally there to change his the biggest, life. The biggest of his life, and then he just throws it away. But yeah. luckily for him, came right back and did it again on weight and everything. Yeah. But, like, 
what about uh Gabriel Burns' uh brother? Herbert. Yeah, Herbert. Yeah. Came in underway and had no cardio. Yeah. What's I, that? That's that, way more embarrassing. The, the man looked like he was straight up just eating pizza pretty much the entire he was just, entire time. He's like He's like if I went and fought right now. Yeah. Like I ate pizza and drank beer today. Like I'd be terrible. Yeah. I mean it was it was embarrassing. It um, was embarrassing. But yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to see here. Um I I'm pretty sure it was uh Brandon Hoyville. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Um I'm trying to remember who exactly it was that uh missed the weight. But but yeah, it, I mean, and just the fact that the guy had an hour and a half, and then at some point during that time, wasting everybody's time, mind you, just up and said, "I don't care enough to to even attempt to lose the weight." And then it's even worse because then the guy who lost also gets thirty percent of his pay docked, though be- he had to fight somebody who is overweight and yeah. then lose losing the fight. It's just silly. Yeah. Just it's just one of those things that everybody. Everybody on the roster should be able to make weight, or they should move to a different division where they can. Yeah. Do we, yeah. I mean, do we have to start doing the body mass, body mass index and hydration tests all the time for, to make sure everybody's at the right weight they should be? Because if we do, Paul Acosta is a heavyweight. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was trying to find this. I don't know why it's so hard to find. Um, but I don't know. I agree with Israel. I think it should be higher. I don't necessarily think it should be 90. I mean, maybe just even increasing it from 30 to 50, you know? Yeah, because they make it significant. Yeah, there needs to be a significant penalty if, like, you got a month and you can't get down to whatever 95 pounds, 195, one, like, whatever the weight is. Just just make the weight, guys. You're not, it's not like you're fucking 280 trying to make 265. Yeah, it's. Five pounds, ten pounds. Yeah. Let's um, get it. Yeah. So that's I think that's gonna do it for uh this little final part on UFC two fifty three. Uh we hope you guys enjoyed the coverage, the commentary that we put out there. Um so yeah, let's try our best gonna, guys. Yeah, we're doing we're doing what we can. Um, Just like, comment, subscribe, tell us if we're doing bad even. We'll yeah. we'll take it. Yeah. Um so yeah, so thank you guys again for watching. If you watch all the way through. And we will definitely see you guys next time. Peace.